What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Well Nerds Podcast. This is episode number 63. My name is Slater, and I'm here with Eric, Adam, and Caitlin. Hi, everyone. What's up? Hello. <laughs> she, uh, I, uh, hello. I <laughs> Caitlin is back in the past with us. Yep, back on the West Coast for now. West Coast, West Coast. Best coast. West coast. It is the best coast. It's raining where I am. Heck yeah. I can hear it, actually. Is that really rain or someone else's heater fan or something? No, no. it's the rain because the window's open a little bit. Whoa, oh, the rainy. Rainy PNW. <sighs> the rainy PNW. Nothing ever yeah. changes. Do people actually say, like, use that acronym when they're in the PNW? <laughs> I mean, like if you're texting or something, yeah, but I I don't really hear people say it out loud. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> I was walking around Seattle. Yeah, there's like gift shops selling hats that say that. I was like, oh, that's weird. Yeah, I mean, people refer to it as the PNW, but like you don't say P- you say like Pacific Northwest, but then you write it PNW. For some reason, when I think PNW, PNW, I think of like San Juan Islands, but that's just because that's the only place I've been there a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's like yeah, Oregon and Washington's the PNW. Oh, well, I, I just don't. I don't okay. like. I don't want to give. I don't want to give Oregon that. PNW. Wow, you're a hater. I'm just saying. I don't feel like they're that <laughs> north, bro. Yeah, it is that north. <laughs> I'm above the 45th parallel. We're up there. You're a parallel. <laughs> Whoa! Wow! Oh my gosh! Watch Harsh. that language. Your kids here, man. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, if California didn't take up half the West Coast. Yeah, that's true. Could could like Sacramento be like part of the PNW or not cool enough? No, no, no. <laughs> maybe humble, but probably not. We probably just lost all our uh, Oregon listeners now. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. yeah so, seriously. Yeah, my, parents are, from the PNW. my parents are insulted and they're right here in the other room. Yeah, dude, come on. I can't <laughs> be part of the the lower the LPNW, the lower Pacific <laughs> Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oregon has surprisingly good whale watching. Yeah, it does. It's just the, yeah. the weather is tough. Like, it's pretty seasonal, and the weather's pretty tough. Like, those harbors are gnarly. Yeah, Depot Bay, I could I could throw a rock across the harbor mouth. I, yeah. I can never see a narrower And it has a entrance. jog in it. It yeah. has a bend in it. Yep. It is insane. Dude, that rain's that's insane. Our our listeners can hear your rain. I know, we can literally hear your rain actually a lot. I hear something like in the headphones right now that's I don't know. Maybe we're getting weird feedback. I don't know if it's rain or what. I think it's I don't rain. Know what it is. Maybe. I think it's I think it's me making rain noises. Is it you? <laughs> well just <laughs> strong that rain noise is, you should probably go for higher ground or build a, a arc. Don't I know, it's pretty, it's pretty loud, Caitlin. I don't know, I hear it too, though. Like, like something's, I don't know what's going on. Hey, you guys ever get this question? Speaking of rain. Did the whales come out in the rain? Heck yeah, bro. <laughs> I saw the whales to, in the rain. What I used to tell people is that whales live in water, so the rain doesn't bother them. <laughs> that yeah, almost rhymes. Pouring, if they're pouring, if it's pouring and they go... <laughs> And they take that big inhale like a blue whale's got to take in like a gallon of raindrops, dude. <laughs> they don't care. I guess. I think that there's more oh, to the blowhole than we know, dude. I think they there can was a paper. There was a paper this summer. I'll have to look it up so we can talk about it on another episode. But basically, it said that um, some species of whales are not very good at getting their blowhole closed all the way before they go below the surface, so they do aspirate seawater. And humpback whales are one of them. <laughs> Dummies. So, um, yeah, so people are always, you know, we always say as naturalists, like, they don't swallow, they don't get water in their blowhole, like, you know, it's their nose, but they do. (laughs) So when they are taking a breath, like, when they're exhaling, you know, the blow does have water from their lungs, from their lungs, and it basically, as part of their mucus, they're expelling. Um, But I'll have to find, I'll have to find that paper. You know those times where the blue whales, right when they get below the surface, they shoot all their air out and it shoot, does like a big yeah. fountain. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Th- maybe that's when they do it sometimes. Yeah, they gotta. Like, Could be. They like they're like backed up and they gotta like sneeze. I love when a yeah, whale. They didn't close their blowhole in time, so they're just like <laughs> coughing it out. 
seem to have happened more in, in Newport than here. Like, we, or because the whales are very consistent, Monterey. But like when you're following a single whale, like while traveling, it's different. But I love when they give you like a fake dive. Like they go down, but then they come back up for like another series of breaths, like really quickly. You know like I mean? the fake out dive? Yeah, like where like you think they're going down, but then they come up like in two minutes, or like they do kind of a half dive thing. Yeah. I had a humpback I fluke every every after every breath the other day. It was funny. <laughs> Just like to fluke a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Fluke, fluke a lot. <laughs> Adam, look at your dog. That's the cutest thing ever. My dog Aww, is so tired. Luna's in Are the you background. Tired? You tired after our walk? Oh, yeah. so cute. Um, okay, so we have lots of whale news. Do you guys want to do that first or Instagram questions first? Or sightings, because I forgot I went whale watching. Like, You're like, you and Eric did go whale watching. <laughs> you first, Adam. All right, I'll go first. Okay, so I went, obviously, I'm in the yard right now, so we're fixing our boat, so I'm not on the water every day like I normally am. But um, I took a couple of trips down south to hang out with our friends down in, uh, in Newport. Um, Newport Coastal Adventure, Pacific Offshore. Uh, I did a, actually two trips. One was pretty special, but the first one was pretty cool. Um, we went out with, I went out with Pacific Offshore, my friends down there, Delaney and Mark, um, that you guys know as well. Um, and we went down to like Catalina Island on an all-day trip. It was a good time. But the coolest thing ever, you know, we had breaching humpbacks, which is always fun. Um, got a couple of really nice photos. But I saw one of my favorite whales ever, whose name is Listo. Um, and Listo is a whale that we see in Santa Barbara quite often. I think this is the first time he's been seen south of Santa Barbara. Um, but when I first ever saw Listo, he uh, was a really small, skinny whale. Um, but I watched him pretty much this whole last summer, um, intermittently here and there. And I saw him a couple weeks ago, and he looked really good, which is good. He looked really fat and chunky, mm-hmm. which is uh, nice to see coming from such a small whale. Um, so, yeah, that was good. Always good to see whales that you recognize and it's funny you can just like recognize them immediately i always love when that happens you know yeah um that is awesome. anyways and then my uh my second trip uh i got invited on a special little trip to go out to san nicholas island which is about 60 miles offshore um and that was pretty cool i've never been to san nicholas island it's one of the islands that not a lot of people get to go to um, it's right behind the Santa Cruz Basin, which is a area that drops down to about 6,000 feet. So I'm sure all sorts of of, uh, of sea creatures are back there, sea monsters. Uh, but the coolest part for that trip was that we saw um, sea otters. It's like one of the only sea otter colonies south of uh, Conception. And you know what? I, as soon as I saw that photo, you know what it reminded me of? The fact that, or that time that there was a sea otter down in, um, shoot, what's that place called? San Clemente. No, it's in Newport. And what's in Newport Crystal Cove? Cove. Crystal, Crystal Cove. Cove. Crystal. Yeah, so the one in Crystal Cove, I bet you didn't come from like above Santa Barbara. I bet it came from like those islands. Probably. It's pretty cool. There's a, uh, there's a rookery on, uh, on San Miguel, a small one, and then one on San Nicolas. And they, what, what used to happen is obviously there's this huge like uh, battle between you know fishermen and sea otters because sea otters eat a whole bunch of stuff that the fishermen want and stuff that the lobster uh, fishermen want and urchin collectors and all that kind of stuff. But um, they actually used to kill sea otters, you know, which is obviously against the Marine Mammal Protection Act. Uh, but that's a big thing, and I'm sure it still probably happens in the, on the outskirts today. <laughs> Um, but I can't remember who it was. I don't know if it was Noah or not, but whenever a sea otter would be found south of Point Conception, they would essentially take it out to San Miguel, and what ended up happening is that a lot of them actually swam swam back to Monterey, uh, which is a a long swim, but um, a few of them stayed, so that's pretty cool. That's why that rookery is kind of there on San Nicolas. There were originally sea otters there, but obviously I think they are hunted to extinction, um, is, uh, yeah, is that what was, uh, was taken out, 
Sabbath Conception, but that's now the only one of the only ones there. So yeah, there was a uh, uh, it stopped a few years ago, but there was a uh, no otter zone established. There was a no otter zone established, and uh, yeah, if they were, oh, I forgot the exact border, but yeah, it might have been south of Point Conception. If they saw any otter there, they they relocated it. But I still remember over at Dana Wharf, we actually had some otters. Uh, uh, I think the furthest one south was towards San Clemente, but then after that, one showed up um, off of the coast of Torrey Pines, alive over there. In San Diego, so yeah, they still wander all the way down. I think the original range for southern range for southern sea otter, I think, it was northern Baja. So, I mean, there's definitely like shellfish and stuff for them to eat all the way down. Yeah, as long as they stay in water, I think they're they, they're still a way to cool <laughs> down. They'll be okay in southern. I mean, water. northern northern Baja. No, really, well, that's you don't see yeah. otters just out of the water that much because they uh, they overheat their their fur is that good. You know, you go on land you you instantly heat up yeah i, I heard wonder of one. if maybe oh go ahead i was um somebody told me that there some researchers spotted one actually off of baja i think this year or last year yeah um so yeah they definitely can can survive in those warmer temperatures which is uh, yeah. pretty cool but so technically well, wonder... like a, yeah, a century ago that's you know that's normal range still yeah. exactly yeah, maybe there's a regional difference too. Like when they were established, maybe those otters didn't have quite as thick fur. Yeah, there could have been like a yeah a different locality or something. Yeah, but otter history. Yeah. I mean, because I know whole... their fur is like basically watertight. But yeah, yeah, we can literally do a whole another episode on southern sea otter history, especially here in California. I was just gonna say when Adam was talking about the relocation and stuff, that'd make a good mini episode topic. Yeah, yeah, otters have a not just biologically are they interesting, but their history, especially out here along the Pacific with the hunters and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. So who who manages the relocation program, Eric? Do you know? Uh, I forgot who it was. It might have been either NOAA or U.S. Uh, US Fish and Wildlife. So. Yeah, uh, I couldn't remember if it was Fish and Wildlife or if it was NOAA either, but... We can look into it at a later date, but it's super yeah. cool that you got to see it, madam. That's a definitely an interesting piece of marine mammal information that I think a lot of people don't realize. There are otters down in the Channel Islands. Yeah, it's pretty cool, and uh, they're they took us a while to find, but um, there's a secret little spot that you can definitely find them, and there's a there's a good amount of them in there. Cool. How many more? How many did you see total the, the, that day? Uh, we probably saw about ten, but oh, nice. Um, took us a while to initially get on them but once we did we kind of kept seeing them popping up um it was just this huge like kelp forest with like sea lions and sea otters which was pretty rad i had definitely wanted to jump in <laughs> it looked beautiful <sighs> so right. eric you also been out on the water right yeah it's been typical like good old monterey uh humpbacks here and you got those typical youngsters that are staying here through the winter. And then there's a few, there's a cow calf pair out there today. They're just taking their time, I guess. And then Rizzo's every day. Uh, I think we already did an episode of all those orca sightings I had. They actually showed up again today, but um, a small private boater found them, uh, a boat that's usually very helpful. They found them, took some photos, and by the time we got to them, they, they lost them. But uh, the swells are really big but far apart today so three boats were out there and we couldn't relocate them but things have been good um waiting for gray whales to get more steady but mm -hmm. yeah good old monterey bay days over here nice. um yeah i don't think of anything super memorable we we possibly have some new calves with certain pods here with, with our with our orca so that might be pretty interesting hopefully they make it yeah yeah, I saw the two sixteens had a new calf. So that's yeah, cool. I hung out on Big Sur again. I had some off days, so I hung out on Big Sur. And I, I just realized that me and Slater a year ago, or two years ago, we were out there on the cliff, sorry, seeing some gray whales coming down. I didn't see any whales that day when I went back. When did I go? Monday, Tuesday, or something like that? But had condors. I know some people still like condors. So yeah, that's pretty I cool like to see. Condors. Yeah. Tim nice. and Kate had killer whales a couple times this year on the cliffs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Tim and Kate saw them the other day, so. 
it's been good over here, but as you know, with everything going down, um, we our trips are barely able to squeak out there because attendance is so low. Yeah, people are getting nervous. So yeah. <clears throat> um. So you guys have big swell. Like, is Maverick still going? Mavericks, yeah. Earlier this week was 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 pretty big. Uh, Thirty to forty. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and then we had good minus tides. Everyone's catching on, knowing it's a good time to go tide pooling. So I know there's a lot of people have been doing that lately. So. Yeah. yeah. Lot, this is the first year I've ever noticed a lot of people on Instagram talking about king tides and monitor. Like a lot of people. Even the aquarium was talking about it today, which it's every year, but it, it's just funny because I think yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people are trying to find activities to do. Yeah. I mean, the Literally. aquarium usually does something on the king tides every year, but um, a lot of people are posting, like, tide pooling pictures, and I think it's because they're not on the boat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay, do we want to do whale news, or do we want to do questions from Instagram? Either or is fine with me. Also, did I give the last of my sightings before we, before I got done with the delivery? Oh, you saw a turtle. we were. We saw turtles. We saw manatees. What kind of turtle? We saw dolphins. Green you did turtles. see a manatee? Yeah. I didn't get any pictures. I got, like, one crappy video. But we saw, like, six or seven manatees. Wow, you cheater. Yeah. The water's so murky brown. Most of the places we saw them, you couldn't even get a picture if you wanted to. Damn. You, like, saw its head in the ripple, and you're like, that was a manatee. And then it was gone. <laughs> Someone posted a video of a manatee today, and it was like this crystal clear blue water, yeah. and then the sea floor is like the very floor is green. It's yeah, weird. yeah. Um, when they crystal go way up in the yeah, when they go way up in the springs, like in Hamasasa or in Crystal River, then it's like clear, clear water. Um, but like we were on the ICW on the outside, so it was still like really murky ri- river water. But there are places where you can snorkel with them, and it's, like, super clear. But, yep. The spotted dolphins, I think, were the coolest thing for me. I had, yeah. like, I had two littler dolphins come into the bow, and I was like, huh, these look kind of weird. And they're bow riding, like, really chaotically. And I was like, I guess maybe they're juvenile bottlenose. But I kept being like, this, something's not right. And then, like, 20 minutes later, like, 15 of them came and there was a bunch of adults with like the fused spot pattern and i was like oh they're spotted dolphins That's and the so boat was sick. on autopilot so i yelled at johnny to come out i was like you have to see them That's so cool <laughs> so so they must have been juvenile spotted dolphins i had seen before and then all of them came over which was cool <clears throat> so and they're i think so they cool. were i think they were atlantic spotted dolphins not pan tropical I think. <laughs> Pretty so. sweet. I've always wanted to see them. They're yeah, yeah. Cool and, um, yeah. So that's my sightings. Yay. Slater Next. saw Lacey. Slater saw Lacey and a bearded dragon behind him. Yeah. Nice I'll be on the water soon. Yeah, you will. Yeah, when you I will. get back to Monterey, I'll be on the water. There you go. Um, let's talk about the news because I actually was just reading the article of the um, Beak Whale, the first one you posted. Yeah, there's lots of whale news this week, but we can start with um, there's a new species of beaked whale. Is it well, official? They think, right? Yeah. They think. DNA they have they think yet. Yeah, they haven't done the DNA stuff yet, but they do think that. <clears throat> um, Highly confident. Yeah. So let me open up the article. So they think that they may have discovered a new species of beaked whale off the western coast of Mexico. And they're highly confident that it's a never before described species of beaked whale. Um, Jay Barlow is a researcher they consulted um, who's working with Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. And I think basically what happened is um, they were collecting underwater footage and like this thing just like went by. And they had previously recorded um, acoustics, and there had been some strandings off of the coast of California that didn't quite fit the box of, like, Hector's beaked whale or Perrin's beaked whale or Cuvier's beaked whale, but they, like, didn't know where to put it, and they didn't have enough samples to, like, make it its own species. 
And now that they've seen it like in C2 alive, like they've seen it in the wild and it was alive and moving and they have audio to match with the visual, they're pretty confident that it's its own species. Did now I kind of didn't read it because I don't want to say why I didn't read the articles, but um, of a certain organization. But is it true they only took eDNA, not actual biopsy? Um, let's see here. Because if it's eDNA, I mean, I mean, I wonder how. I mean, I know that stuff is pretty good. What is eDNA like? So blow. they took like a water sample around the animal and they're getting all the environmental DNA and then they're sorting out like what's there based on what's in the water, which I will say there's been leaps and bounds of progress in eDNA and it's becoming more and more of a compelling tool. But this article doesn't say, maybe the other one I posted does. <clears throat> Uh, is this a sea shepherd that wonder if these are the people are they doing what are they doing down there are these the same people that are down there for the vaquitas no this is a different team i think it wasn't even that far down where was it i think they're like 300 miles offshore hmm This one doesn't say either. I, I would have to try and find a different report for the DNA sample. But they may not have been able to get a biopsy. I don't know. Yeah. So they basically it, are going to have to pull out DNA from the eDNA sample that doesn't match anything else. And then they're going to say new, new species. Yeah. But they also have acoustic signals. And they have photographs. Um, and they have video. So I think they, they probably have enough to make a pretty compelling argument that it's not one of the the known species. And then they could move forward with further investigation into declaring it a new species. But yeah, I, I don't see anything <clears throat> that specifies if they how they got genetic samples. But pretty cool. Yeah. I think... Um, I think that... <laughs> I think that uh, that's where you're going to see new species still be discovered. If there are new species of whales that we don't know about, it's going to be beaked whales. Just like earlier in 2019, right? It was that species was separated from Bairds on the <laughs> Western Pacific side. Yeah. So that would be the second new beaked whale species in less than two years, which yeah. is pretty cool. Wait. Isn't that absolutely insane that we could discover a whale in 2020? I mean, yes and no. I think they've obviously this the whales have been there the whole time, right? But our technology and our recordings and our ability to get more specific information about whales is enabling us to really better understand what the heck's going on. But yeah, it's pretty amazing that like this species of whale has evaded us until now. Like they've just been there on the sly in the deep sea, been like, hee hee, you don't know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Do they really go hee hee? It, well, and we also probably think they all look the same, right? Like it, yeah. it, it from the average person, that's just uh, they all look like bears, cuvies. Like if you yeah, see like, just wow, that back, a weird looking whale. Yeah, exactly. They got the like diatom colors and all that stuff on them, and it's like you would just think they all look the same, but yeah, that's not true. Yep. Because of science. science. <clears throat> yeah, science. So. So Look at my computers. Uh, yeah, what's going on, Adam? Are you okay? Yeah, what's wrong, Adam? That's. <laughs> I had to leave for a second. I don't know what's going on here. What happened? You, go well, back to you guys know how I was making that video and you guys were like, hey, edit that part out? Yeah. yeah. So I edited that part out and I was exporting it, but I pressed JPEG instead of H.264. So it literally exported like 6,000 JPEGs to my desktop. <laughs> 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 Is that why your screen look was all loaded with that stuff? Yeah, look at it. It's all messed 
<laughs> that's what you get for trying to freaking multitask and not be fully attentive to the conversation yeah. at hand. Hey, I closed, well, I closed World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, thought you had an emergency to okay. run the bathroom again. Moving no. on. So hey. our second piece of whale news. Wait, did you have something to say, Slater? Well, something weird that I was like watching while getting a tattoo well a while ago was called Have you seen Alien Worlds? No. Eric, yeah. you would love this. I, love, I watched all of them, yeah. Have you where they're talking about these animals that live on like a planet and like they just stay in the air always. They never hit land because they can just like use the I don't know. I don't know. It's it's some sciencey crazy, but like the way they're oh my, the whole thing is crazy. You guys should watch it. It has nothing to do with whales, but they're like sky whales. I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. It's like Doctor uh, Who sky whales. Eric, yeah, Eric, if you've watched it, what would you say it's like? Like, um, you know, it kind of remind me of Avatar, but it, it the the concept was it behind it. I think like. Let's just say a million years from now, you know, or even on another universe, another planet, how what animals could possibly be like and stuff like that. Hmm. Like, yeah, crazy. All okay, right. Maybe I'll watch it once I get it's the new Wi-Fi complicated. going at our house and I can actually watch things downstairs. OK, so second piece of whale news, which is also pretty exciting. The first two North Atlantic right, bo- right whale calves have been born and documented. Woohoo. What's the no. number at right no now? Yeah, where yeah, at? Under 300. Or mm. under 400, excuse me. Three six, was it 366 or something like that? I saw 366 somewhere, but I can't relocate it, so don't quote me on that. But yeah. the article where Noah talked to CNN, they're saying less than 400, but they're not giving a specific number. Oh. But get this. One of the babies was sighted on December 4th off the coast of Cumberland Island, Island Georgia. You just missed it. I went, I know, I went by there in the dark. That's not I a wish... good time to see whales, is in the I dark. I know. I probably if you have a spotlight. Yeah, I recommend I everyone go whale watching in daylight hours. It's easier <laughs> to see them. <laughs> Pro tip: We were we were offshore of Cumberland Island, like in the middle of the night, and I was like, "Oh my god, we just flip and missed them." So, and then the other one was off of uh, Villano Beach, Florida, on the seventh, which also I just missed because I was on the inside passage. But it was too rough to go outside. Like, those poor little whales were getting beat up. Because it was yucky out there. But anyway, super exciting that there's at least two babies. Because every baby counts for them. Definitely. Um, but they... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say this. Somebody posted something about a North Pacific right whale. Yeah, and... that was what I was going to say next. Japan? That crazy... yes, yeah. Put it in here. Yeah. yeah. So, Choshi, Japan, for the first time in two decades since the launch launch of this tour operator, which is uh, Choshi Marine Research Institute, they enc- encountered a cow-calf pair of North Pacific right whale. Okay, so you guys, um, I just realized something. The, I was We don't see them because they're probably, like, not in our side of the Pacific as much. Well, is there... There's is also there... only 30 left. I know, but what if they're just not here? You know what I mean? Like... Well, in 2017, there were a few sighted off of California. Yeah, in La Jolla. Yeah, yeah one was, was in... It might have been the same one. One was in the Channel Islands during an yeah. aerial survey. Well, this says two separate whales off La Jolla in April and one another one off Anacapa in May. One probably was an actual gray whale. Another one probably wasn't a gray whale. No, they were they were confirmed sightings. Yeah, yeah uh, the, footage, the footage is really good. The one's aerial. The La Jolla one was funny because... It was someone on the vid- news. Yeah, someone videotaped it, sent, submitted it to the news, and the news goes, look, how cute, gray whale playing in the surf. And then a bunch of people who really knew whales looked at it, and they're like, that looks... <laughs> it had, you can see the... The, uh, the square-shaped the flipper. Eye. Yeah, you can see the peck fin come up, and people are like, uh, wait, that's not a gray <laughs> whale. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So is there... Like, there's not two separate north pacific stocks right it's just one stock. not as not as far as anyone knows however there's so few left that i don't think you could tease that out anymore gotcha but this is saying that this is potentially the first ever confirmed cow calf pair in the whole of asia outside of russia um since the 1970s that's pretty insane yeah it's pretty nuts 
Oh, yeah, I see the aerial footage of it. Wow. So, yeah, it's clear as day. That one's a good one. Yeah, that's sick. God, that would be like, that would be, I've said it before, but that would, that's like my number one sighting. Like, I would freak if I a Pacific right well. How high would your voice get? Like, uh, it would prob- probably break glass. Like, probably right, Terry? High? <laughs> probably, uh, probably do some damage. <laughs> I don't want to be standing next to him while he does it, but I want to be standing next to him when it's sighted. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to about, lose my wait. hearing, but I want to see it. Just wear it. You're talking about Adam. Yeah. Yes. It's a high pitch. I can break glass. Oh, my God. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so funny. Margo was literally watching that video this morning of Adam's little compilation of him sounding like a turkey, dude. It's <laughs> <laughs> like. I was, a, I was actually, yeah, I was actually afraid my neighbors would be like, "Is that lady okay?" <laughs> She's fine. God. Oh my god, can you imagine Adam and like Tonga, like the whale just like turns and like has the eyeball at him? Adam would probably just die. I'd probably probably choke. He'd like inhale yeah. water. He'd just suck it through the snorkel. <gasps> yeah, <laughs> he'd be like screaming through the snorkel and aspirate. <laughs> I think the last time I got crazy, like, high five, hug everyone excited was that day when the humpbacks, the earthquake, when we kind of, like, knew oh, it was, that was when nuts. they just went off. I remember high fiving Eric. <laughs> yeah. That was nuts. That's probably <laughs> one of the craziest things I've seen as, an, like, while naturalizing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You were naturalizing for Kate that day, and then Eric came down yeah, on the second trip. For funsy. Yeah, that was a wild day. Yep, we have yep. had some memorable days out there. Guess what? That just means you, Caitlin, and Eric, and I need to get... Wait, you care... Wait, all of us need to get back to Monterey. <laughs> all of us. <laughs> you and me? No, not you. Okay, good. You're, you're not invited. <laughs> you to stay in Santa Barbara. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. What? <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday. It's too cold to wear pink. What? It's never too cold. Are you talking about pink, like the color, or like the Victoria's Secret stuff? Yeah, I'm talking about mean girls. Oh, yeah, Eric, you're going to go. <laughs> I mean, you could wear pink brand also if you want. Eric, I'm not sorry, I'm in, like, a I'll go to Demonte. I'll go to Demonte later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go now before in-person shopping closes. Oh, shit, yeah. Sorry, Bennett. Eric's cussing. Again. <laughs> Right, I'm on my way to Japan because I got a lot of things I see. They got sperm whales pretty often, killer whales pretty often. They got bears on the beach. Like, and now they, they got, got sea whales. eagles. Yeah, the sea eagles are what I really want to freaking see. Me and it, I don't care if I have to see them on an iceberg. <laughs> so you guys know Slater. He always wants animals with ice. They got good ramen, too. Yeah. Top ramen? Whatever like kind of best, ramen you want. The real ramen. Best ramen. Um... Well, maybe when we all can travel again, we can go to Japan together and watch whales. That'd be cool. Shiratoko? Freaking cool. What? Yeah, the Shiratoko. Shiratoko? They see a lot of cool stuff over there. They just look um, at sperm whales like it's nothing. They're just like, si- like yeah. they might as well be tied up to the sperm whale just hanging out with it. Like, it's like <laughs> what? Like, okay, so let's move on to our next piece of news. This one, I don't really know how we're going to say it and have people understand what's going on we'll have to post a picture or something in the um on the facebook page like we'll have to post the link to this shot but did you guys see that tropicalist uh what common the dolphin heck is that yeah. what is that Dude, <laughs> have you seen it eric looking. no no the beak it's a common dolphin but the beak is like two oh feet. yeah 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 i saw that <laughs> in yeah. thailand yeah it's crazy. It, it looks like it mated with a river dolphin. It's It's photoshopped. Yeah. No, people are in the comments. They're saying that they've had similar sightings. Like they're posting photos of other dolphins. Caitlin, this is in. Cedar Fauna. It's Photoshop. Yeah, yeah it's, it's in from Thailand. The language. Photoshop. Let me see. So this. all of these different people posting pictures of a dolphin like that are photoshopped. Probably, yeah. Also, someone tagged us in the comments in Seattle Fauna to have us talk about this. Maria, thanks. It's not. It's not photoshopped. I can yeah, tell. Yeah, even, what... even someone like Uko. Uko's an anatomist and a and a um, artist. He's he's weighing in saying it's real. 
Oh, look at all the people. It's so funny. You see any whale news and you go read all the comments. It's like a hundred people we know that are commenting on it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty insane. Stay off I'll... of those sites. Oh, 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 <laughs> someone my got my picture. I'm taking them to court. <laughs> I'm taking them to court. Okay, anyway, so that I thought that was pretty nutty. I'll put the links to it. You guys can decide for yourselves whether it's Photoshop or not. Um, sure. We're they got go a the humpback next... tail. Yeah, we're going to it. They got a humpback tail throwing with the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. That's oh my next my. piece of whale news. And there might as well be snow in the background. Is that snow in the background or is it just white water? Jesus. Just white water. <laughs> <laughs> God. Might as well put a lightning bolt in there too. Might as well put a lightning bolt and a rainbow. Imagine a lightning bolt hitting the top of the Statue of Liberty <laughs> torch. <laughs> So, yeah, so there's a, a humpback whale sighted in the Hudson River and in front of um, Staten Island and the Statue of Liberty last week. Oh, December going, 9th is when this is from. So, um, and it, I guess it had been kind of sneaking around the area in the little bays and stuff for several days. And Gotham Whale, which is like the research um, group that goes out whale watching and stuff um, in New York, identified it as NYC0089. And um, I guess that whale has been kind of around the area for like a week or so, but they tried to go out and see it the other day and they, they didn't find it. So it may have worked its way back out into the open ocean. But um, if you guys don't know anything about Gotham Whale, they're a new up and coming organization on the East Coast as humpback whales are rediscovering the waters around New York and northern New Jersey, um, and they do have a Facebook page, so if you want to follow along with them, um, or if you are a whale watcher out that way, they use American Princess Cruises for their trips, um, and then you can also submit any uh, photos you might have for their catalog to them, and I think they might be working with some of the bigger organizations out there and maybe Happy Whale. I'm not 100% sure on that part, but um, they are trying to better understand the whales around New York City, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. There's yeah. a. I don't know why this photo didn't go viral. You know, speaking of whales in front of famous landmarks, someone uh, from Oceanic Society got a. They were going to the Farallons and got a breach with the Golden oh, Gate. I saw in the back. That. Yeah, it was an oh, amazing yeah. photo. Yeah. Everyone sent it to me because I, I told them that's like my dream capture. <laughs> yeah, it is. We'll have to do that too. We'll have to do a whale nerds trip where we try and get humpbacks with the Golden Gate. Yeah. I had one the other day swim right under it. It was pretty cool. Uh, I was over at Fort Mason, yeah. Fort Point. Oh, Fort Point, yeah, Fort Point. And I saw it swim under the bridge. Cool. Awesome. It's pretty lined up pretty well, too. It's kind of it's kind of a... That's a hard thing, right? Like, it's because, like, if it's close enough, you'd want wide angle so you can get the whole Golden Gate, right? Yeah. But if it's too... You know what I mean? It's like, it's got to yeah. be kind of a... It's a tricky it's photo, so... Up. I mean, yeah. come on. That's if if anyone got that photo, are you kidding me? How stoked would you be? Yeah, yeah that's uh, there really it is. Cool. Like, oh, fast. my. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, f I follow them. I've well, I've worked with them. Oh, it's yeah. on Oceanic Society's page. Yeah. 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 Okay. Ah, uh, they didn't ask me to go to uh, Mexico this year. I, I think that's they... because I don't think they're going this year. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't global. think they're gonna plan to go. Why? Um, dang, it's already been a year since I like was in Mexico. It's almost been a year since you know. Well, not yeah. actually. Is this on your list too? Um, no, it's not, but it can be. Yeah, someone's finally getting to uh, work with the genetics of that the type D. Maybe we're officially going to get a subspecies of a. Uh, yeah, I saw vodka. it briefly, but I didn't read it all, so I hadn't put it on the list. But if you if you read it, if you want to talk about it, go for it. I'll just read the headline. <laughs> After several transportation and pandemic-related delays, we recently received word that the genetic samples of type D orcas that we collected southwest of Cape Horn last year are now getting sequenced. Woo so, and we all know the differences. Yeah, type D, really bulbous head, very, very tiny, almost non-existent eye patch. So we're going to officially see if we're going to get a Orsinus orca subspecies. Yeah, that would be exciting. Yeah. Um, let's see. Where did my link go? 
Oh, here it is. Okay, so my next item on the whale news agenda is ACS conference is going virtual. Yay! Yay! So, um, after they normally do it in November, so it's going to be in, at the end of January. Um, registration is not open yet, uh, and I don't see a price yet. Um, but if you follow them on social media, they should have some more updates soon. And their speech, their speakers so far that they have scheduled is Eric Hoyt, Gianna Minton, Peter Cochran, or Corcoran, uh, Louisa Ponum Palum, uh, Hans Thuisen, and Lori Marino and Michelle Fournay. So um, I can tell you there's probably going to be some stuff about killer whales. There's probably going to be some stuff about dolphins. There's probably going to be some stuff about humpback whale song based on right. who's speaking. So Saturday, January 30th, 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Free of charge. Free. Is really, Yay. Is it really going to be free? Yeah. Gratis. What? Well, ACS events are usually free. The conference usually pay, but I guess because it's in an in-person it's, venue. So. There's only six talkers too. It's not like there's. For there's now, seven. I don't. There may be more later, but yeah. yeah. Well, that'll be cool. Um, be nice to at least have something go on this year for ACS. Yeah. Um, moving right along. Um, oh, I haven't watched the YouTube video for this, so if you guys want to pull it up now, it's the humpback whale on the boat in Mexico. Adam, you reshared this, didn't you? Yeah, I, everybody. Do you want to talk about it? Sure. Um, so essentially it was this dude flying his drone from a hotel over a group of boats on a humpback mom and calf. And the calf, it looks very new. Um, it's got the floppy fins. It's really light and pale in color. So everybody thinks it's, people are saying, 30 minutes old, people are saying a couple hours old. Obviously, it's pretty hard to tell because we've never seen, really, really seen a humpback whale give birth. Obviously, there's that setting off of Maui or Hawaii last year. Um, yeah. So, but essentially what happens is, you know, the mom and mom's playing with the, the babies on the mom's back. Um, oh, yeah, I see it now. And yeah. um, the, uh, they're, they're playing around the boats and essentially they get under this one boat and it looks like the mom obviously makes contact with the boat um, with her back, it looks like. And one of the, and it, you know, causes the boat to kind of move around. And um, one of the people on the boat actually falls into the water. Um, obviously, he didn't get hurt or anything. Oh, uh, well, the calf, like, gets wedged between the mom and the boat for a second. Yeah, but it honestly looks like, it doesn't look aggressive at all. And also, when he lands in the water... There's zero movement from the like the oh, mom doesn't get startled like, at all. The guy not. was like way leaning over the rail, and then everybody ran to the side of the boat. Exactly. So it just kind of the swell. Oh, and she's bleeding. And Who's so that's, bleeding? That's the yeah. mom. So that's the big I think thing. Her, I think yeah. her tail must have like kicked up into the propeller. Well, everybody is saying that it's postpartum blood, and I don't agree with that at all. Wait, no, wait, wait! Like Stop. really red blood. Where are you seeing blood at? After okay, so when the guy falls in, she, like, swings her tail. Oh, I see the blood. Oh, wait, that is not what you... You think that she just cut her... I okay, don't know. you guys. Maybe not. There's Maybe nothing not. on that little boat that... Uh, no prop would cut her that deep. We watched a boat hit one doing 30 knots, and it barely skinned a little calf. So there's no way that mom stabbed herself with something on the boat. I've had people tell me that they've been completely still while watching whales, and whales have, like, cut themselves on a still propeller and, like, bleed from a still propeller. So, I don't know. And my, it's my, coming from underneath. My whole reason from, from sharing that video is that whether it's postpartum blood or the mom cut herself on the back of, the, of a non-moving boat's propeller, like, at the end of the day, these animals, you know, they're not perfect. Like, like they can make mistakes. They can hit your boat. Um, you know, but, but that's, it's all, it's moral of the story is just, just, it's always nice to get in their space. And obviously that was the kind of mom and baby interacting with each other. Um, and again, whether it's postpartum blood or if it's actually blood from the propeller, you know, just always be wary. Um, I think that's very important when working with 
giant animals like those guys and obviously and it didn't seem like those all those boats were you know whale watch companies or necessarily knew what they were doing um it looked like there's like five or six boats around that pair but um a, a really interesting video nonetheless however which way you look at it um well there's an this next clip after the boats there's another like shadow of blood um as it first starts and then it like moves out of frame so maybe it is postpartum because this is a very teeny tiny floppy calf it is like, a very still not so, very good at breathing. Mom's holding it up a lot. The mom has it on his head a lot. Yeah. I I I, I would definitely. I mean, we've seen a whale lunge feed into a boat, and it didn't. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. I don't think it cut itself on the prop, especially where the blood came from. You can see that it seeps around each side of the fluke. So how yeah, would the prop go underneath the cat peduncle and cut yeah. it? Yeah, I don't know. Dude, We're, it just, probably just gave birth, like, who knows, an hour before or something. Yeah, interesting. Um, let's see. And there's also that other, plus, even that other boat jets off, you can see right there, and it doesn't even startle it at all. Yeah, the mom was pretty relaxed in that video. Yeah, I think if she was cut, she would be like, because when that whale got hit by the boat, they, 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 they like, took off from the they were going towards the feeding frenzy feeding group and then they ended up turning around and leaving yeah. so i feel like if she was pissed off she would definitely leave the boats they would go on a dive we watched a mom and calf go on a dive and pop up a mile away from false killer whales in maui i mean even so like if that was a baby newborn calf, like probably want to give them their space yeah you know, six boats around a newborn whale is probably a little Yeah, long. we can't assume that they drove into their space either. I'm sure they did pull up onto them, but they also, it doesn't seem like the boats, like their head all, look at the boats, they're all completely stopped at 55 seconds and the cap, they're going right towards the boats. Yeah. The only boat that's, the only boat that's moving is the one on the way outside. So, I, I mean, mean I don't know what the rules and regulations are in regards to watching humpbacks in Mexico, but like they're with pretty, gray whales pretty, in Baja, they are pretty strict. No, they're pretty strict for, for humpbacks. Oh, actually, here you go. There's go to go to one minute and 14 seconds before the whale even goes to the boat. There's blood coming out. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it kicks go. its fluke and you can see it. Well, there you go. So, so it must be a brand new baby. Yeah. Brand, brand new baby. Dude, that li it's, I like how it just rubs the baby up against the back of the boat. I know. She, like, got it wedged between herself and the boat. That was a little wild. And good job on them for not moving the boat and getting scared. Yeah. Because that calf is right at the edge of the boat. So, yeah, there's blood before. <laughs> that guy, it's because that guy was in the water. Yeah, there's definitely blood before... Uh, Okay. Yeah, so I think what happened is I don't even think it was the force of the whale. I don't even think the whale touched the boat, really. I think it was that guy was way leaning over the rail, and then everyone ran to the side, and he fell in. Yeah, that's kind of funny. I don't watch that part again. <laughs> oh, he was backwards, and they all yeah, ran over was, to like, the side. Yeah, he backed up on the rail and just, like, went butt over tea kettle. We got to put this on our – we got to share this link on our Facebook. Sure, his sunglasses didn't fall in the water. I mean, he <sighs> must have had eyes in the back of his head. Yeah, you're right, Slater. I do see the blood come around her fluke before she even gets to the Yeah. Blood. Dude, she could have just had that baby. Like, uh, yeah. Dude, she must be a pretty before. inexperienced mom to like roll the calf under the boat like that. <laughs> She's like, lift it up. Here you go. Touch my brand new comeback. <laughs> this, I just made it. It's a 2020 model. <laughs> I that, just made it. It looks like they almost caught an actual birth right because it's like we've always yeah. been almost like literally when i was in hawaii almost caught that one we're out there yep. for the search yeah 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 uh, and it got stolen by the whole humpback boat collision too like i think yeah. that they could have been looking at this as like this is a very close to birth exactly that's like forget the science let's get the hype about the guy falling into the water like also, if this is a, look at Sorry. the comparison of like how big it is compared to mom's head like it goes right to her shoulder from the tip of her rostrum like this is pretty incredible 
information. It's flu. It doesn't have any control over its fluke. It's still all yeah. flopping around. That's so cute. You can tell by the yeah, way that's gotta be a brand spanking new baby. Wow. Also, this calf is gonna be monstrous by the time it gets to Monterey because it's born before Christmas. Imagine we see this boat baby in Monterey. <laughs> Yeah, too bad there's no fluke and or you can, any distinct marks. And you see the um, other whale come up below, the, what's it called? The escort. Escort. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. In in case anybody's wondering, I've deleted 3,000 photos off my desktop so far. Oh, my god! Halfway. Halfway. You should just hit <laughs> control A, delete them all, and then and then filter them by, in, your, in your trash, and then grab everything that you wanted on your desktop back out. Wait, I can do that? What are you pressing? Yeah, dude. Con Com yeah, command like, A or Control A, a and then yeah. delete it all. Or just reformat your entire hard drive. Yeah, just start new. Whoa, no, 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 no. He's uh, smarter than that. He knows better. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing right now. Is Wait, but if they're laptop? open, if they're open, if they're not icons on the desktop, is that going to work? Wait, the, the problem is... accidentally opens them all. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I need them to the freaking trap. Like, it's just so slow. It doesn't work. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Difficulties. First, he sounded like an airplane for the first 10 minutes of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then he saved. Then he. Then we lost him for a few minutes of the podcast. <laughs> Adam, are you going to be okay, bud? Wait, something just happened. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, uh, next. <laughs> See you guys later. Okay. So, given all of our whale news, um, what I wanted to kind of talk about after that is um, what, what are you guys' thoughts on, like, is technology increasing our ability to understand and discover new species? Um, like, with the beaked whales, like, I don't think they would have got it unless they were filming underwater already. And they were getting hydrophone recordings. I think the bioacoustics, like, the hydrophone is really changing the game for whale research, for sure. But the video is also super helpful. I mean, yeah, we, we talk about it all the time. Like, you can look at any aspect of it, whether it be drones, hydrophones, underwater footage. Like, yeah, when, used, when used responsibly and, in, and in, a, in a thoughtful manner, you know, technology can be great for, you know, that's for science, just in general, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and even, even this guy w with the video from Mexico, like, he potentially made a pretty good discovery or at least collected a good piece of data and he just was some dude with a drone. Like, yeah. like regular people are catching this kind of stuff on camera now. Exactly. And then uh, scientists are like, dang it! <laughs> some guy having a margarita on the beach just, just saw a whale give birth. He was in his room, right? Yeah, he wasn't even on the beach. He was, like, in his room on the balcony, right? And he flew off his balcony. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> probably, like, off of, like, Rosarito or something. Like, not even that far down. <laughs> no, I don't know where it's at. <laughs> He was at Papa's and Beer enjoying yeah. one. He's like, hey, guys, look at my drone. And then, no, I'm just kidding. He's in Cabo, right? Yeah, I Cabo. think. I don't know. Yeah, the water's so blue. It's still pretty green in, like, San Diego sometimes. Or, like, Rosarito and stuff. Just depends. I guess it's green down there, too. So then thinking about, like, you know, the humpback whales off of, like, New York and, like, even the different places in California and the Salish Sea and, like, all of that. Like, are we seeing more whales because we're better at documenting them when they get into these places or are these populations like expanding and using new habitats and like we're seeing this like rediscovery well, the of like, is, old ranges yeah humpbacks is definitely you know more animals more being spread out you know yeah so. yeah that's that's one of the most interesting things to me is like looking at whale populations as they rebound from the from the post whaling era and just seeing where they go, if they're, like, learning new behaviors, you know, just tr trying to recover the culture that was lost during the whaling era. You know, I think that's, yeah. to me, that's, that's, like, one of the most interesting and just unbelievable parts about our field is, you know, looking at that stuff. Like, um, remember that whale I saw a couple years ago? We named Dos Equis. He was, like, doing the, the kick um, feeding, and then he would come up and trap feed and, like, yeah. I don't think anybody's seen a combination of those two again. You know, that's just that's just a whale being creative and, and figuring out a way to to capture, you know, a, a 
spread out group of anchovies, you know, mm-hmm. is out of it. But it's just really cool to see as they rebound, as their populations are restored, you know, where they go, what kind of new things they learn. I, I think it's really, really interesting. Well, I like that humpback that's eating baby salmon up in British Columbia or learning as Alaska. Yeah. Alaska, yeah. yeah, just sitting outside and, the net. <laughs> and then, well, then he goes inside the net. <laughs> you know what, Slater? Yeah. I, oh, I don't think we should even. Are we even allowed to talk about? Forget. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think that is a no. <laughs> yeah. So I would agree. I think you know, as technology is improving, and like everybody's got a pretty decent camera in their pockets these days, like we're able to learn more. Um, and get more data points from more places. And then, you know, whale populations are indeed um, expanding and, and trying new things and using old habitats. And so, so then the question becomes, like, how do, we, how do we coexist? Like, these whales are moving into very urbanized waterways. Like, we've got to, like, I don't know, we've got to make sure everybody's sharing the space but like how do you you know that's a daunting task still an ongoing issue you know ship strike yeah. out here especially yeah. it's, a, it's a big ordeal you know they won't slow down give them cash incentives they will, still won't slow down yeah. there's a lot yeah. more with bigger whales though right like you'd say it happens ship strikes is a lot more with like blue whales and fin whales mm-hmm. yeah than it is like humpback whales well i mean humpback whales still have back. an issue with it too i mean i saw before before we shut down for the yard, I saw a freaking car carrier going through the channel at 22 knots, and it it was probably 300 yards away from hitting from hitting humpbacks, like dead on. Luckily, there's a, mm-hmm. there's a group of humpbacks we were watching, and they all, when it really got close into the area, they all dove down really fast, and they all like kind of threw their tails as it was like approaching us. And we sat there, and this thing flew by us at 22 knots, and we were it was rocking us pretty hard with the wake. So I mean, I'm sure it definitely does happen. We had a we had a dead blue whale in the channel earlier in the summer, a dead juvenile that it was kind of washed up on Santa Cruz Island, so we couldn't really tell if there was any signs of six ship strike, but its whole ventral side of the body was just kind of opened up. So it it definitely happens you know people ask me all the time if we see it and we we def i've had some really scary close encounters in the channel because that's right where the shipping lanes are they go right through the blue whale feeding ground off of santa cruz island and we've had some really sketchy encounters and i hope i don't see that one day but i think it would be really eye-opening and probably change people's opinions on that stuff if somebody were to film it yeah they that one in washington that one got filmed from the ferry no one remember that? Did it I hit? What, did it hit a fin whale? What did it hit? Hit a humpback, I believe. A humpback. Yeah, it yeah. was in Washington on the ferry. And they, it was, you know, one of those typical boom, and they saw a big pool of blood. Yeah, I mean, I think. Um, so a couple of years ago at Bean Hollow State Beach, which is like north of Santa Cruz. Um, there was a humpback whale washed ashore there and like its skull was cracked. Yeah. So I think it was from a ship strike. Definitely. But I mean, then there's a whole other issue of of small cetaceans too. Like, you know, how much harassment can dolphins and porpoises take from private boaters or from whatever? Um, Like, especially like Rizzo's dolphins or some other animal that hunts at night and then is trying to sleep during the day. And then everybody's over there waking them up, waking them up, making them move, you know. Yeah. Or people following Orca, you know, half of their all day trip. Yeah, I mean if you're I mean if you're on any animals for more than an hour, it's like what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. I mean, spending six plus hours chasing Orca a pot of Orca from the center of Monterey Bay all the way down towards, you know towards Carmel for hours. I mean that's obviously going to be not good and no matter how much you love these animals i think that much time is a little too much yeah yeah there there should be responsibility felt um but i want to go back to what you were saying earlier caitlin about the technology and kind of how you cope with that um in the channel in the channel right now they're um they have one acoustic buoy that can obviously hear whales um Mm -hmm. 
And so what they're trying to do to, f to further have the shipping lanes pushed north so they don't run into the blue whale or humpback whale feeding grounds, just push a little bit further north, is they're trying to get um, funds for two more buoys so they can actually triangulate where the whales are. You know, yeah. one really hard to actually, pretty much impossible to know where they are. But if you have three buoys set up throughout the channel, you can obviously hear them on three different, on the three different buoys and kind of figure out where they are. Um, so that's one way that technology can help. I'm sure if, you know, as, as whales yeah. move further into harbors and just more urbanized areas, I think acoustically, if you hear them on there, you can put out a report or something, you know, and have people be wary. Or, and I think it also just comes down to education. Like, yeah, a lot of people don't know that humpback whale population rising or that they're found two miles off this off the coast of Avila Beach, you know, or so again, it really just I think it comes down to education and, and that's where we come in. That's what we love to do is educate and take people out to see these animals and really help them, you know, help us coexist. Cause I think that's what it's gonna come down to is their population rises and obviously our population rises as well. Yeah. So with right whales on the East Coast, what they do is they have a hydrophone array. And as soon as they pick up any detections on any of the hydrophones, they start putting out like marine broadcasts on the radio and they um, slow down the uh, speed limit approach to 10 knots um, coming into like Cape Cod Canal and stuff um, and coming into like Saugus and all those areas where there are a lot of right whales, the Port of Boston, all of that. Um, and so like we would hear it on the radio, like at the end of the season, like you know, the security announcement on channel 16. And then it would say for more information about North Atlantic right whales and speed limits, please shift to, you know, 22. Um, oh, and so, awesome. yeah, so they, they do have like more of a strict um, shipping lane enforcement there. And then they have Marine broadcast going out about them. Um, and then also if there's big sightings of them, like there was a, um, a SAG, so a, a social aggregation um, off Nantucket earlier this year. And so they put that on channel, the Coast Guard put that on channel 16 and then you could like shift channels to listen more about it. Um, just so that, you know, mariners are advised to stay 500 yards away and the whales were reported in this area, keep a lookout, all that kind of stuff. So hopefully something like that could be developed for like blue whales around the port of San Francisco and the port of LA because, and then around the channel islands and stuff, because I think that's pretty important for, um, for the, for the, for the, the, before they get the pilot on the, sh to bring the ship into port, you know, when I was working out of Long Beach, you know, Long Beach, port of Long Beach in Los Angeles, obviously what the biggest port out here in California, along with the San Francisco Bay. They, I remember out Long Beach, over Channel 16, every now and then the Coast Guard would jump in and just say, you know, hey, look out, there's whales in the area. Do they do that in the Santa Barbara Channel, Adam? Did, did, they, did you ever hear that? Not really. We try to alert the um, shipping. Oh, you guys were doing it yourself then, huh? Yeah, we try okay. to alert when we can. But at the same time, it's it's pretty hard to do so just because even to change or slow down direction for them for the first off, they're probably not going to do it just because they're not going to do it. Yeah. There's so much, you know, financial um, backlash. And at the same time, even if they wanted to it would take them miles and miles and miles, um, there have been a few really close encounters where we're, where we're like radio the captain and just let them know that they're in the area. Obviously they don't really do anything about it, but it's, I think, you know, it, that's what it's going to take is, you know, when you look through history about saving whales or saving endangered species in general, you know, it comes down to federal law. It comes down to the Marine Mammal Protection Act, the Endangered Species Act. Um, and I hope that one day something like that can be implemented for the shipping lanes. Um, yeah. That's really what it's going to take. Um, yeah. I know people are trying and things are, you know, they're not 100%. I remember when they, they wanted to put that type of uh, transmitter or speaker on the cargo ships to make a sound yeah. to have the whales take off. And some of the whales are actually coming towards the cargo. Yeah. Ship. The like, right okay. whales were like swimming towards it. And I was yeah. Like, oh, they're like, what's that? Gonna work. Like, <laughs> like uh, abort, abort, not working. <laughs> <laughs> Bad yeah. plan. Yeah. <laughs> we had an opportunity. I'm not sure exactly what happened to it or if it's going to continue. Um, probably, I think just COVID had a impact on it, but they were, they were trying to put, 
put some sort of infrared um, camera on our boat for a while that mm -hmm. was able to detect spouts. So oh, yeah. they use that in New in Zealand, I think. And they used it in Point Arena, too. Noah, actually. Was it Noah? Oh, yeah. Wanted. At Granite, Granite Canyon, they use it for the Gray Whale Survey. Yeah, they were on it for the Gray Whale Survey, and they it, it had some type of AI in it because it was learning to tell the difference between like a plunge diving pelican and an actual Gray Whale spout, you know? It get, I mean, it gets me sometimes, you know? So yeah. yeah. <laughs> difference, but, you know, like, again, going back to the technology saving whales topic, but there's just so many ways that you can look at it and so many different pieces of technology. Yeah. We've talked about it with drones before is, you know, the snot bot and like, you know, DJI mm -hmm. is thinking that people are going to use their, their drones for marine mammal research. But when you put it in the, in the hands of creative people, you know, you can do a whole bunch of things with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's very simple technology. That's I think helping our whales too. like simple software. I mean, look at the AI, and the recognition stuff on like happy whale you know people mm -hmm. learn to uh, learn the whales learn the individuals they love them they love them they want to save them you know yeah well and researchers can use it too i mean it's meant to be an information sharing platform and so if it can connect people together and yeah. connect data sets together you're going to get even more of a holistic picture of what what you're trying yeah. to it's study. like once you attach a name to these animals you know people start realizing oh you know it's like a cat or a dog i love them now <laughs> you know? yeah <laughs> people love snowflake people love fran people love yeah exactly yeah, yeah. fran's in mexico by the way so yeah well, we got footage of fran off of uh, mexico already yeah oh, oh cool yeah. yeah like on the east coast dude people are like nuts about their whales like oh yeah they're salt very is a celebrity. yeah we yeah. know about salt over here yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i mean people like at the beginning of the season were like who have you seen so far and i'm like uh <laughs> that's pretty awesome yeah. just like our yeah yeah, our SRKWs, people around the world can name them all, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Even the dead ones. Yeah, everyone knows Granny. Everyone knows remembers Ruffles, you know? When yeah. I was, uh, when I was working in the San Juans, um, I had this little, probably eight-year-old girl come up to me. And she was like, have you seen this whale? Have you seen this whale? Have you seen this whale? And I was like, I, I don't even know these whales. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, like, that's, that's the beautiful thing about it. Um, is that these animals are so impactful. Like, they've obviously had impact on all of our lives. We're just a very small group of people, you know? And I think with the happy whale thing or just knowing the individuals, I, I'm glad the West Coast is really starting to get into it now. Obviously, the, the East Coast is still probably a little bit ahead of us, but I don't know. It's, it's just, it's really cool. And I think when you build a community around like-minded people that care about these animals and want to save them, that's the end of the day what's what's going to get action done yeah so that's that's why i think con yeah that's why i think conservation starts should start staring to instead of hey let's protest this country or these people because they do this instead let's go out and straight out save the animal you know let people fall in love with the animal not get mad at someone or a country well yeah. what was that film that the guy did where he went to other countries and turned their where they were like kill I'm trying to think of the one. Are you talking about there, when Greg went to Tonga? No, this guy, he, they were killing like manta rays and he went and turned it into oh. a diving thing. And then yeah. they yeah. Were, was that racing extinction? Yeah, I think it was racing yeah. extinction. Yeah. yeah. That's what they need to do. Yeah, you turn just gotta, it into yeah. ecotourism. Exactly. Teach them that they're alive, are worth more alive than dead, you know, because yeah. everyone benefits your, your airlines, your hotel, your dive shop, you know, your, your restaurants. restaurants all yeah. benefits from a live animal. And yep. instead of, going to that country and protesting them help them you know yeah 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 like yes told, they heard someone, i forget who it was that told me they're like i'm not going to iceland because they hunt whales and i was like well that's going to make it worse because mm -hmm. if you go support their whale watch industry and they see yeah, that exactly them, you have to exactly. realize you go to iceland you have to get a hotel you have to buy food you have to you know get gas in your Rent car, a car. You have, yep you have to do a bunch of things so like you're supporting so many things by going whale well, yeah. even though you're going for the whales you're supporting a million other things which is why san juan islands and well all of the pacific northwest is gonna have such a tough time with covid yeah. and um or not just covid but and then putting the you know moratoriums on these whales because yeah. if people can't go whale watching to see these whales it's yeah. gonna then in, it's all those restaurants that are open on the islands are gonna have a tough time yeah, perfect example is like, you know, last year when I sailed across the North Atlantic, literally all, all but one country I went to, all all but every country I went to on that cruise, 
hunted whales, you know? They all went after whales, yet people gave me flack for visiting these countries. I was like, well, why didn't you say something about Greenland or Iceland, you know, or Norway? You just picked out that one country I went to, and then they're and I'm like, everyone does it, you know? And the, mm-hmm. the, the funny thing is, I went there for wildlife, and you're mad at me, you know? It's like, there's, and, and then when I went there, I met a bunch of people who were like, yeah, we're trying to spread the word that these animals are worth money, you know? To mm-hmm. our, our country alive, and yeah. get it. you protest a country, you're you're going, you're you know, you're taking a step backwards. You got to go after either go out and save the animal, or just be against that specific tiny little percentage of that country that actually is harming the animals. You know. Yeah. <sighs> it's yeah. it's a tough topic when you when you bring people's culture <laughs> and what they've been doing for a long time into play, and you know. Yeah. And, well, and us and, and the, people around or you know whatever it is but I, I think that there is a point where you know we are in the modern world and i don't think it is acceptable to kill animals equally if not more intelligent than we are but, but they live on an island where there wasn't exactly so exactly. yeah commercial like, commercial whaling and subsistence whaling is two different things totally in my totally, opinion totally, yeah totally. like the, the, the whaling in the faroe islands is much different than whaling in other places yes yeah at the end of the day, there's a certain way to go about those things respectfully and thoughtfully, not just saying that these countries are murderers and whatever. Yeah. 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 I mean, you look at the totally. big picture, it's like, especially in the Faroe Islands. So one person I talked to, it's like, you know, they're against this because of the whaling. But there's, a, you know, they, I told them, where are you from? They're like, oh, you know, I'm from the United States. Well, like, look at you guys. You guys are the the country that hunts the most. You guys literally wear hunting gear as yeah. just look at how many guys you see wearing casual it. attire. Exactly, <laughs> it's casual attire. You go in there and see them wearing whaling shirts everywhere. You know, we blubber we shirts. Know, yeah, I'll have to wear a, you know a a whaling shirt. Yet you know I can go to Walmart, Target right now and pick out a real tr- a real tree item that's you know made for hunting. I can get a phone case that's made out of a real tree. You know, we have all this hunting memorabilia, and it's like, okay, and we're telling other countries that they're bad for killing animals. It's our culture here. Yeah. Pretty, pretty backwards. Yeah. 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 I think, um, I well, think, as it, people... also, though, it's, it's the people who are telling the people, those people that are hunting probably don't care about whaling, though, either. That's yeah. another thing. Well, yeah, uh, and you have to, like, you have to really ask more questions before you can just like write off an entire nation of people. Yeah. Yeah. And so. I'm not going to get technical here, but you, our little circle here knows that the stuff I've been through, you know, like I've been to countries that we think hate us and they don't hate us. They might hate our government, but they love our culture. They love our people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah, it's touchy. It, it is, is touchy. For sure. I think it's always worthwhile to ask more questions and have a conversation, not just like shut it down from the start. And that's what I did. Yeah. When I was in Iceland, Greenland, Faroe Islands, I just sat there and talked to people. Me and my sister just straight out goes, so you guys eat whales, huh? You know, and they're really, <laughs> open, really open about it, you know, Yeah. brought up good points, you know. Yeah. Well, watch the world. Yeah. Well, watch the world. Go. I mean, yeah. that's how you learn. Yeah. 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 yeah so where are we going next later? Oh, uh, me and Eric are going somewhere. Sorry. <laughs> and Adam and I are going to go bathroom. somewhere then. Yeah, I'm going to Maui to visit Caitlin. All right, well, Eric and I are going to Japan. So All right, back tough, to Mexico. Tough luck. I want to go to Japan, too. Uh-huh. I'm the one that told you about that company in Japan, Slater. You can't go without me. Well, they're my friends now. <laughs> hey, really? No. I actually. He totally wants them worked. to. You were totally quick, man. for a Japan trip. And they were like, yeah, here, book this book right here <laughs> yeah they were like book now yeah. here's our website you know what send them send those guys an email those are folks in japan ask them if the right wheels will still be there when i get there and then we'll go <laughs> they're probably gonna be like um what freaking right because they didn't it's not even that company that saw it <laughs> The one that Slater's talking about is not the company that saw the cow calf there. Well, email them anyway, you know, ask them <laughs> if the right wheels will still be there when we get there. They're like, no, you silly American. Right. Why would you ask such a question of a wild animal? <laughs> was it a two hour podcast? No, we, no. We, we, we talked for an hour because someone was in a bathroom and 
He was not. Somebody had to go get a beverage. No, he came out with his hair all wet. I was taking a shower, bro. (laughs) Me and Eric were on the podcast since 5 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. We're working on material. All right. Well, I think we're getting off the rails a little bit here, but I think that was a good round of discussion and lots of whale news. So thanks for hanging in there. Um, We do have a new Patreon subscriber. Sarah, thank you very much for your contribution to the podcast. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, thank you. And keep an eye on your email or your page or your Patreon inbox if you do join, um, because we do ask you for your mailing address so we can send you a little um, welcome gift. Um, So if you're interested in joining, it's patreon.com slash whale nerds. Otherwise, you can always find us on Facebook and Instagram at whale nerds as well. So, yeah. I guess we'll do the Instagram questions next episode. Oh, yeah. This This is is good. Then it'll build up. It'll just have more. Yeah. Yeah, if you have topic suggestions or questions, like send them in the DMs or comment on our posts um, on Facebook or Instagram. Either way, we'll be able to get them um, because we did get a few this time that we didn't get to. So, yeah. That's true. (laughs) Thank you, everyone. If you made it this far, um, please rate and review the podcast wherever you listen to it. That way other people can find out about it. And... Continue to stay safe and healthy out there. Be safe with a lot of love. That's what my wife's, that's what my, that's what my, <laughs> wife's, my, my wife's, uh, my father-in-law, mother-in-law, when they, they like, uh, before they eat, they say, be safe with a lot of love. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, we'll end it here. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, flippity-flop. Boop, 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 boop. Beep, beep, pop, pop, pop.